Fishing deep water structure can be extremely difficult in clear water. Let's join Larry for some of his favorite techniques in today's lesson, deep water smallmouth. That's pretty good smallmouth here, I believe. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not a bad smallmouth at all. Coming up again. Pretty good little smallmouth. <laughs> oh, Greer's Ferry is really getting noted for smallmouth. I mean, this is not a big one, folks. By no means. But look at him dig. There is definitely some big ones in here. Well, and they don't want to quit. That's not a bad little smallmouth bass right there. On light line, that's a fun fish to catch. Yep, that's what we're looking for right there. You know, this lake, uh, back when I was a kid, there was uh, a few smallmouth in it. But they were what I would call old river smallmouth, native smallmouth that, that uh, were in the lake when they actually dammed the river system. And, uh, but what happened is when they closed the dam off, all these smallmouth, they actually left. They didn't like this lake. They went back up the river. And there wasn't any smallmouth in here at all for years and years and years. And then the Game and Fish Commission came in here and and uh, initiated a stocking program, and these smallmouth actually now, uh, they were raised in the lake, um, or were they, they were put in the lake itself, so they think it's home. One thing that, that I want to emphasize to you on fishing for smallmouth and Kentucky bass, or anytime you're fishing for bass or you're fishing a body of water that doesn't have a lot of big fish or maybe it's like this lake crystal clear water and fish that are just really hard to catch that's when i resort to using a lot of small baits like the little power crawl and uh, spinning rods and light line because of the clear water and these fish are just harder to catch especially at certain times of the year Early spring, when they're shallow, man, they'll bite spinnerbaits, crankbaits, just like everywhere else. But when they go to structure, then you got to resort to using a lot smaller lures and light line techniques, especially in the daytime. Ooh, nice little smallmouth. Yes. Not a bad little smallmouth at all. Boy, just stay down there deep. Now you talk. He made him run to the top like he was going to jump, and he missed. There he come out. <laughs> oh, I love it when they get faked out, and they think they're in the ready to clear the water, but yet they're not. Well, if you don't just beat anything I've ever seen. All right, is that enough? One more time for us. Well, for crying out loud. Makes me want to just rot him in the boat, but I know he's just barely hooked. Look at there. Now that's a pretty good little smallmouth. Pretty good little smallmouth. Had him right in the corner of the jaw, I mean. Beautiful little smallmouth. Not too bad. I switched back from my Carolina rig. I just cycled, caught one, but I couldn't get them to going on that thing. A lot of times when the, when, the, when the weather turns off real slick and still, and I mean it has just calmed up unbelievable out here, when fish tend to suspend, if I can get a bait to fall through them, I can come a whole lot nearer catching one than I can by dragging the bait underneath them. That jig head, it just falls through them, and a lot of times they'll either go down with it or they'll catch it on the way down. 
I'm not sure which it is, but I just know sometimes when it gets really calm and fish are suspended in clear water, I can take a jig head type bait and drop it through the fish and I'll catch a whole lot more than I will absolutely, you know, just crawling a lure dead on the bottom. If conditions are calm and fish are suspended over structure, the best rig to use would probably be a jig head rig where the bait will fall vertically through where the fish are holding instead of working under the fish as a Carolina rig would. Uh-oh. I don't know what I got here. Probably another. Well, I believe I better get my button pushed because he's making me want to backpedal or something. You get fishing this light line, you can't horse them too much. Whoa, look at here now. I got me a little, little Kentucky spotted bass, what I got. Come on, he ain't no monster by no means, but he's a pretty good little Kentucky. And he's wild. Yeah, that's not a bad little spotted bass. Not a bad little spotted bass. He couldn't stand my little. A crawdad is the number one food in the fall for smallmouth and Kentuckys. And what this is, a little three-inch power crawl, and I rig it up on a, on a quarter-ounce jig head with that light line. And I'll tell you what, they cannot stand that little crawdad. Tore my little crawdad all to pieces is what he did. Not still good. Now there's one thing I want to show you. Because not a lot of not a lot of fishermen know how to rig this little power crawl on a Texas rig or on a <laughs> know how to rig the little uh, power crawl Texas rigged on a jig head. So when you rig it up. Just insert the hook in there just like you would a, a worm hook. So you just go right through the bottom of it. And then when you slide it up on the jig head, push it right up against the head, just like that. And then you just turn him right around and take that jig head and stick your hook back inside of him. And now he's rigged totally weedless, but he's on a jig head. And I'm gonna tell you something, this falls so much differently than if you rig that hook right down the middle of it uh, exposed. And uh, this is a very good technique for fishing a jig head, jig head worm rig anytime you're around brush or rocks. Or if you're getting hung up continuously, just rig him up weedless. And not very many people know how to do that. And it's a, it's a heck of a good way to, to fish a jig head rig. In fact, I think it falls so much different that a lot of times I catch a lot more fish on it rigged this way than I do exposed. Color selection in crankbaits is something that a lot of fishermen have trouble being confident with. Now, for myself, personally, in the spring of the year, and I classify spring of the year as February, March, April, May, and in some areas way up north in June. But this is the time of year that I'm going to choose crawfish patterns, usually something with a bright orange belly and a brown back. I want something that looks like a crawdad. And it just seems to me like bass and uh, all over the world, no matter where you go, in the springtime, love crawfish. And that's why this color is such a good color to choose. Most better baits right out of the package, if you'll notice, they come with a skirt that's a little bit longer than what you would really like for it to be in a clear water lake. Now, in real clear water conditions, I'm gonna take the scissors and I'm gonna trim this skirt right below the hook. But in stained and muddy water conditions, when I want a bulky bait, I'm gonna leave it long, just like it is. Now, after you catch a bass, nearly every time, I don't care what kind of spinnerbait you use, usually this arm is gonna get out of shape. It's gonna get out of whack, either spread open too far or bent off to the side. And it's very important that you train it to go back into the right spot. Now, when you bend it, what I mean by that is, when you bend it, you grab it about in the center 
of this arm, not up too close to the eye and not down on the end, but right about the center, and you squeeze it together. That way you're not putting any undue stress on your line tie right here. But you squeeze it, you get it down here about the width that you want it, and that's about right. That's what I call about right, about an inch and a half between the hook point and the arm. And then you turn it around and look right down the wire, and if it's in line with the hook point, that's where you want it to be, and it should run properly. Right there. Nice small mouth, yeah. Maybe a different bait is the right deal here. I still got him on light line. Even though I've got my bait casting equipment out here, I just feel more comfortable fishing a jig with, with a little bit heavier line. I believe I'll just lift him in. See there, there is some bigger small mouth. Look at there. Yeah, that's a nice little, look at there, he, that bitsy bug drilled here right through the nose, right where it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's a lot of fun to catch smallmouth like that now. All right, yeah. Now this is a new little bait that Strike King come out with. This, to me, it is a smallmouth bait or a Kentucky bait, but it will catch largemouth too. And uh, in fact, I think Dance named this thing. It's a bitsy bug. It's a little small jig. It's got a little light wire hook in it. And put a little baby bowhog frog on the back of it. That is a good smallmouth bait. When everything else fails, that's the type of bait that I'm going to pick up, especially in the, in the spring, in the fall, in the winter, when uh, smallmouth, smallmouth are on the rocks. And it's a simple little bait to fish. Just much like fishing a plastic worm, you relax. And I'm gonna tell you what, that one thumped it. You know, it wasn't just an old mushy bite. It went thunk. Usually when they do that, you don't miss them. One of the things that I really like about fishing with a jig and a, and a small piece of pork is I can cover a little bit more water with it because, you know, I love to fish a jig and I feel like that most of the time fish hit a jig on the fall. So therefore that allows me to make that cast, let the bait hit the bottom, pull it a time or two, and if nothing gets it, reel it in. Now this is daytime fishing, not nighttime. Nighttime you're getting into a feeling game. But for smallmouth bass on rocks, and in water temperatures less than 65 degrees, I feel like a little jig and a little piece of pork is the very best bait you can get. Oh, good small mouth there. That is a pretty one. Pretty one, I mean, he is gorgeous. He is gorgeous golden. That's a nice one. Got them teeth, too, won't turn loose my glove. Now, don't run down there and tell all your buddies that I'm fishing this bank. I'm, I'm getting tired of catching one fish per spot. And, you know, when you're fishing structure, you're fishing a section of water where uh, you're, you're working an area and you got a lot of fish there, Boy, a lot of times you catch one or two of them and release them, you don't catch any more. I'm getting tired of it. Maybe he went that way. Really, day in and day out, everywhere that you fish that you've got smallmouth and spotted bass, probably the two very best baits most of the time is either a small jig with a very small bowhog frog or a power tube. These two baits consistently will produce in clear water conditions where fishing's tough. That's one thing you don't realize. You know, when I used to guide on Toledo Bend years ago, and I keep saying that, but that's, I use past history a lot of times for, uh, 
to try to figure out things. And back in the old days, you know, 15 years ago when we guided, you never turned fish loose. And you tie up to a tree and sit there and catch 30 or 40 bass out of one spot and keep every one of them and they never would quit biting. Well, that happens sometimes. If I'm, if I'm in a tournament, I know that a lot of times if I catch three or four or five fish in a row and put them in the live well, they just keep biting. Oh, one just thumped the fire out of it. That fish must have swam the other way and didn't tell on me. Hey, oh, I believe this is another nice one here. I still hadn't seen him. Coming up. Oh, pretty one. This lake is getting to be a really good smallmouth lake. I saw a couple five-pounders weighed in in a tournament here real recently, so I know there's some good smallmouth. Yeah, good one. You know, they're not, they're, they're a native fish to this lake, but they're, man, I got him good. These fish here are fish that have been stocked, and they don't leave the lake, they stay in the lake. Good one. Getting my gloves wet, my fingers may get cold in there. I believe the little bitsy bug is the bait for the bigger ones. Now don't go tell your buddies. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on catching a lot of small bass in crystal clear waters. And remember this, if you just learn how to catch fish, period, whether they're big or small, eventually you'll learn how to catch big ones too. Come back and see me again next week and I'll try to make you a better bass fisherman.